All right, I think we're, we're going to start. You ready? All right. Good morning and welcome. I'm Council Member Antonio Reynoso. I'm the chair of the, com the, chair of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management. Uh, welcome to this oversight hearing about the Department of Sanitation's 2017-2018 snow plan. And by the look of the turnout by council members, it seems like you guys knocked it out of the park last year. Um, so I guess this year will be just as, just as well taken care of. Uh, but Local Law 28 of 2011 requires the Department of Sanitation to submit uh, to the council a snow plowing and removal plan for each borough and to make that plan available to the public on the city's website. This hearing will examine the draft snow plans that the council received from DSNY pursuant to Local Law 28 and the city's readiness for the 2017-2018 snow season. These plans cover the department's planning, training, snow removal priority designation, designation categories, assigned equipment and personnel, and implementation of the plans during a snow event. During last snow season, season there was a significant issue with buildup of ice, which can be extremely dangerous for New York City residents. Um, I hope to discuss this with the DSNY and how the previous season influenced the current snow plan and how we are better prepared to handle the buildup of ice on sidewalks, street corners, and bus stops for this coming up, upcoming season. I'm also interested to see how, if at all, Pl Plow NYC has been improved to be more accurate, um, the, the usual questions. Um, and I also look forward to hearing from DSNY and other interested groups and individuals about the draft snow plans. Uh, thank you, and I want to uh, thank the <coughs> commissioner for being here. So we have Stephen Costas from DSNY here, and uh, DSNY commissioner, the Catherine Garcia. You may begin whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, Chair Reynoso, and any members of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste who may show. Um, I am Catherine Garcia, commissioner for the New York City Department of Sanitation. With me here today is First Deputy Commissioner Stephen Costas, I'd like to thank Chair Renoso and the members of the committee for this opportunity to discuss with you the department's draft snow plans and our preparedness for the upcoming snow season. Our draft snow plans detail the department's snow fighting procedures from the onset of uh, precipitation to snow clearing operations after every snowstorm. The plans identify how we will allocate personnel and equipment resources in each borough and district, the coordination of services among agencies, and customer service protocols. We will consider all comments and recommendations received by elected officials on our draft plans, and then we will publish the final borough snow plans on the department's website by November 15th. During the 2016-17 snow season, the city received 30.5 inches of snow. I am immensely proud of the dedication and determination with which our employees took on the task of fighting the 11 snow and ice events that occurred during the last snow season. <clears throat> After every snow season, the department takes the time to review our response during the previous snow season in an effort to identify our successes, as well as opportunities to continue to improve our planning, preparedness, and response. As you know, last year we invested 21 million in capital funds to purchase additional snow equipment to more effectively remove snow from narrow streets, especially during storms with accumulations over 12 inches. This includes five additional snow melters purchased this year and distributed across the city. In total, the department now has 693 large and small spreaders in our snow flighting fleet, which is higher than it has ever been. This fleet not only makes us better prepared to respond more effectively to large snowstorms, but also improves our ability to respond to ice storms and other types of frozen precipitation where plows alone are ineffective. This year, the department will also continue its successful snow sectoring initiative, which was expanded citywide during the last snow season. This approach has improved the efficiency of snow fighting operations by dramatically reducing redundant travel miles. The increased number of small spreaders combined with the expansion of the snow sectoring initiative allowed the department to terminate the tertiary plowing contracts previously used in large snowstorms. These streets will continue to be plowed by department employees and will receive the same high level of service that we have come to expect of all city streets. Additionally, during the 2016-17 snow season, the department and do, and do, and do it made Plow NYC available in near real time to the public and software developers 
through the city's open data portal. For the 2017-18 season, the data will again be made available during snow events, with plow locations being updated several times per hour. The department's snow budget for fiscal year 2018 is 84.1 million. The department has adequate staffing with over 6,400 sanitation workers available to manage this winter's snow and ice storms, including 316 new sanitation workers inducted at a ceremony last week. On November 13th, the department will begin night plow organization by increasing manpower on both night shifts to ensure coverage for snow and winter weather responses as necessary and will perform a full-scale snow drill rehearsal in late November. We also have available at the onset of this snow season more than 340,000 tons of road salt still stored at over 42 locations <coughs> citywide. With contracts in place to deliver an additional 550,000 tons as necessary. In closing, I want to assure you that snow fighting is a core component of our agency's mission, and the department's workforce understands that this performance is critical to keeping this city functioning 24 by 7. The department is a dynamic agency with excellent staffing levels for this snow season, and I am confident that the department's workforce can and will respond quickly and effectively to any major <coughs> snow event. As we approach the official 2017-18 snow season, I look forward to your input and suggested comments on our draft snow plans. My staff and I are now happy to answer your questions. So I, I wanna also thank uh, the hardworking men of DSN, no, men and women of DSNY for the work that they've done um, uh, in the previous snowstorms uh, so far. Uh, and like I said, I got a lot of calls during snow season by council members, and this year I got the least amount of calls um, regarding the work that was being done. So I want to thank you for, for the, the work that you're doing. I also want to say that, uh, that that is also tied to the amount of resources that DSNY is also receiving, finally receiving, um, to address the issues that we uh, constantly are concerned about. Um, so seeing the equipment come in, seeing it, it work um, makes us feel confident for the the following um, snow season, the increase in manpower also um, helps and assists. Um, so I guess what, uh, and also getting rid of the tertiary street contracts, is, uh, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm as happy as I can possibly be um, today um, in my third hearing on snow than I've been in my time here. So that's just me. I'm just saying as uh, the chair, I'm very proud of the, the work that we've done collaboratively in the city council and the mayor's office. Uh, but I do want to uh, kind of move to two things that I want to get to. Um, so the, the Plow NYC situation uh, seems to be a constant concern for folks. I think you've cleared up in the past that the GPS system itself, um, you know, could show a truck across the street or a block over, um, depending on where it is, depending on reception, and in some cases make it so that one block is plowed over another, um, and, and so forth. So I, I guess I want to get to even uh, does Plow NYC, uh, the data that you get from Plow NYC, does that dictate where you continue to move or move in the future? Or do you already have a plan that's set that would address every single street and that Plow NYC is just simply um, tracking that or mapping it? So Plow NYC provides us with situational awareness, but we have 1,425 routes that we need to complete. Um, and if we are completing those routes, then everybody is getting hit. Um, so it provides us situational awareness. We do not usually move vehicles based on the information from Plow and YC, particularly not in the middle of a storm. Uh, and then just to clarify on the GPS, I actually think the system is in really good shape, mm -hmm. but there are certain places that we will never overcome it from a technology point of view, particularly under elevated subways. It's just the amount of metal that's above us just bounces this, the signal all over the place, mm -hmm. and so it can create, go a little haywire. Um, but other than that, I feel like in really good shape. One of the things we added for this snow season, which will make your colleague from Staten Island, who ends up getting a lot of folks who don't usually work Staten Island, um, get assigned there because they have more road miles than, they, uh, than many other communities, is that we put turn-by-turn -turn directions in the cab for the sanitation workers in the spreaders. Um, so I already I know where they are. But this allows them to, in areas that do not have street grids, to be able to find their way. 
All right. No, last <laughs> year was the year. The, last year was the year of Staten Island, not this year. Um, <laughs> so I, I want to. So similar, similar for for someone who is from Brooklyn. I find a similar challenge in Queens. <laughs> so, so speaking to the routes that you had last year, um, because they were modified from the year before, uh, where, do you feel that there is a room for improvement, or do you think that more or less? the routes that you were able to map out kind of assisted um, in being able to be more efficient in handling uh, the plowing of the snow um, or the snow in general? Um, and are there any changes that you're going to make in, the, in, the, in this, in any new routes that you'll be taking on for this year? So very broadly, I actually think that the conceptual way and most of the routes are basically the same, but there are always changes in the city. DOT made a bunch of streets in Queens one way. Uh, we now have cashless tolling, which is a little bit challenging when I have to do a U-turn where there used to be slower vehicles at those intersect or those toll plazas. Um, there's new construction constantly. Uh, so we actually have been going out on Sunday and as part of snow training, running the routes to make sure that we have all of the most current information about what's happening in the city street grid. So uh, to look out for my colleagues from Queens, uh, they're concerned regarding a fair share of equipment and making sure. So um, the equipment that was allotted in the past, uh, was, th was it sufficient? What, did it work? Do we have enough, e enough equipment everywhere? Was uh, there one borough like Staten Island maybe getting more equipment than anyone else? <laughs> um, <laughs> did that happen, or, or do you feel no, that? No, so the way that we allocate equipment is really by lane miles. Um, and so the percentage of lane miles that a borough has is basically the percentage of uh, pieces of equipment that you're going to have, um, which is why, you know, in some place like Queens, they have more lane miles than anybody else. They have more equipment than anybody else. Um, so also in regards to salt, some folks are concerned about salt and whether or not there's a more environmentally friendly um, way of, of melting or, or, or preventing the snow from, from, from sticking. Um, have, have we done any work to try to see if something else might work? Is there a study that's being done? Or, or have we done that already and concluded that salt is the only way to go? So we continue to look at new products. Um, last year we tried something called Ice Bite. In, uh, in it, we actually used it on a bike lane. It was supposed to make it so that snow and ice wouldn't stick. It didn't particularly work. Um, and then we, this year we will try two other products, uh, magnesium chloride and I can't remember what the other one's name is, but uh, sodium chloride. Both of them still are salts. Uh, anytime it's an IDE, it's still going to be corrosive. Uh, so, so far we don't have anything better than rock salt, but we're not opposed to continuing to try and find other more environmentally friendly or more effective products. So just for next year, I would really like to see, um, you know, where that happened. How did it work out? Is it too slow? Is it too, is it burning too fast? Is, is it less corrosive? Just um, or if you have it now, just more details as to how uh, the the agents outside of uh, salt worked. In, sure, in we can snow. provide that to you. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, so the the tertiary street contracts had had, you know, I'm, I was never a fan of them, but uh, in cases where the snow does get out of hand and we might not be able to, or we're falling behind. Um, is there a contingency plan that, that DSNY has to, to make sure they can address the, the snow? So if we think that we're going to be in a large snowstorm, not only are we full force, which means we're on two split shifts of 12 hours apiece, but we also bring in DOT and the Parks Department to supplement and DEP to supplement our, our plowing fleet. Um, so I feel like it's a very robust amount of equipment that we would be able to provide on the streets of New York. So we have the capacity in-house to, to handle almost any storm. Well, as large a storm as possible. As large a storm as possible. Right. You can't. Not any storm. Some, some can't be handled. Um, I, I do. So I want to get into where I think um, we have opportunities for growth. I think we've done a good job at, at doing what we do well, or, or doing what we need to do well. So I, I want to get to uh, pedestrians um, and bike lists uh, are two concerns that I have. The ice, uh, folks, you know, if it's cold and it's melted, it's going to be ice. Uh, is there something that we, we could or should be doing to prevent ice buildup um, in sidewalks or on roads? Um, or is that just a cause of nature that, that is hard to, to, to so work against? So I think you're, you're thinking of the March storm. If you have melt-off, 
um, and then a f very fast freeze. There's, you know, besides getting more salt down, there is not much we can do about that. Um, but, you know, we do, once we are through and we know that all the streets are passable, particularly for ambulances, we do go and start addressing all of the quality of life issues, whether or not that's bike lanes, crosswalks, um, fire hydrants, um, and bus stops. And we did add skid steers, as you know, to our arsenal uh, to be able to try and dig those out. Because while we did get quite a few snow laborers last year, if you were out after that storm, you know, 10 of them would be on a street corner, and they'd be on a street corner for a really long time because breaking up the ice was very hard. In terms of sidewalks, property owners are responsible for clearing those sidewalks. Uh, of ice, of course. Um, <coughs> then uh, the bike lanes, um, after we're done plowing the streets uh, and, 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 and doing the work that we expect the Department of Sanitation <coughs> to do, bike lanes. Uh, it seems like a lot of this snow accumulates on bike lanes, and, and it's almost like waiting for it to dry or waiting for it to melt before we can actually see, have access to the bike lanes. Yeah, and we do send out, as soon as we are done with the streets, we do send particularly the holsters out to do the bike lanes, to the, do the, the ones that are wide enough for us to, to put equipment into. Um, and so, you know, our intention is to try and open those up as quickly as possible. Uh, with better equipment, do you feel you would be able to, uh, to handle almost all the bike lanes in the city of New York? Can we get you smaller plows or smaller? I'm, uh, I'm pretty small right now. I mean, like when you're, we're going to look at a new piece of equipment called a multi-hog uh, that they're going to give us to experiment with for free this winter season. Uh, the challenge with very small equipment is getting that very small equipment to the place where it actually has to work. Um, that just takes more time. Uh, so, you know, it, it's really most helpful if we can use a motor vehicle plow. And so we, d we also will use pickup plows um, for really tight areas. Okay, so just, uh, you know, folks need, I eventually the city gets back to, to moving, of course, the vehicles. Um, the emergency vehicles are the most important. The vehicles get to work um, uh, closer to, to, to when you're done with your work, and then the bikes kind of just, we, we got to wait a week or two before we could get on them. I, I have no I vehicle. Don't think it's a bad, I don't think it's as bad as a week. I, I don't uh, know. I, I, so the thing is that you're right. So some lanes you, I can get through, but then uh, there's certain blocks or, or streets where there's completely clogged up, and I have to either take a detour or actually walk off my bike. So I'm just saying for the folks that are looking to, de to, to stop the congestion on our streets, um, and are actually looking for alternatives to vehicles that we also get an opportunity to, 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 to get to work um, the same way we traditionally do um, in, a, in a short amount of time. So I just really want to focus on that, um, given that we're doing so well on everything else, maybe we have a little more time to really try to plan out and map out exactly how we're going to address the, the bike lane issue. Um, so that's all. It's just a, a request, I guess, that I'm making on behalf of the biking community. Um, and now they, I don't they are some of my most vocal Twitter Yes. Folks. Okay. After well, a snowstorm. <laughs> All right. That's, that's good. They're doing good work. Uh, they're, they're your eyes and ears. I, I want to I say that they're working with you, not against you, uh, to make that happen. Maybe, we, maybe we're on different beats. <laughs> <laughs> all my folks are. All my folks. They, they're right. But um, I'll make sure when I get it, I'll call you uh, and see if we, could, if we could get something going. But um, it's a concern for folks. That, that their primary means of transportation is a bike. Um, if, if, it's, if the bike lanes are clogged up. Uh, I don't want to take all the time. I want to make sure that I get uh, a council member from Staten Island, Stephen Maddie, an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, council member. Thank you, Chair Renner. So welcome, Commissioner. Um, you know, uh, I, I've said it on the record last year, uh, men and women in the sanitation department did a fantastic job last year. I thank you for your constant communication, especially at taking my four in the morning calls. Um, See, this is what happens when you have a new baby. You call yeah. me. I'm up, but like baby's <laughs> older. I'm still calling you at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, I have a baby on the way, December 26th. No, so you won't day. be sleeping Congrats. either. Yeah, so Great. I'll be calling you. We'll just do a conference call. Yeah, we'll conference just do a call. call two Fair in the morning. Enough. Four in the morning conference calls. Um, so, generally speaking, how, how long does it take to finish the Staten Island route from start to finish when you start? For a regular for. If we're in the middle of a snowstorm, the way we design them is that they should be able to get through the routes if we're all on full plow in two hours. Two that hours? Is, that is the way that they are designed. They do run into obstacles. Of um, course. But that is what they're designed so to be. So, aside, will you 
do the main streets twice or three times during that two hours, or you or is that just you're just doing the whole sector two hours and then you start hitting everything again? Or right, you do Highland Boulevard twice? Well, Highland's gonna is going to be out the door. They're going to get salting equipment first, um, and so they they will have plows on the road before we're moving into the sectors because I need the I need the accumulation um, before I'm moving the plows out. Uh, and then everybody just keeps going on their route until basically they're the end of the shift. We flip them and they go out again. Okay. Did you first see any making any changes on, on Staten Island this year or not big ones? I mean, we're tweaking things. And it's like trying to figure out how to do the turn at the Veranzano, you know, stuff right. like that. But nothing big. Okay. Um, when it comes to um, the neighborhoods of Newark Beach and Westley, last mm -hmm. year we changed the system where. We've had the smaller mm -hmm. equipment, yep. just making sure we're You've continuing got your to do small that. equipment. Okay, good. Um, schools, when uh, priority is around schools as well, when you're doing the sector plan, or is it just no? The schools are on critical routes. Okay, and the critical routes are, how, are different. How? Well, the critical routes are basically the same as what primary routes used to be. Okay. So they're going to be the highways, the highlands, the victories. Um, and they're going to also take into account any firehouse, precinct, school. Um, and then we also, if we know that school is going to, you know, we have instructed all of the superintendents to go meet with those principals and custodians so that everybody knows how we're working through snow when it finally comes. So the custodians don't put it over here, and then we put it back, and then they put it over here, which sometimes happens, right. um, to make sure that we're more coordinated and that folks can get in and out easily. Okay. Just, just because, and I, I know you know this already, but... Um, and a lot of my schools are are not on a main street. No, they're, I know they're within the you know the neighborhood and these smaller streets, and um, it's just better to use I think the small equipment and and go that route. So thank you for that. I want to talk about the shift changes because mm -hmm. I think that's where um, last year I think you the, the, the complaints that I did get were about well we didn't see anybody from whatever, you know, two to four, or, and I think it was a Saturday was the big, uh, the most complaints I got in that Saturday storm, and I think it was because of shift changes, so. Well, we also weren't split, it was also the forecast. So that's what I'm trying to ask, so, so can you explain the normal shift, and then how you have to prepare to avoid a split change, where I think it's. So this, there, there, so when we are in full snow ops, we are split tw uh, seven to seven. So it's not then uh, seven to two. Or no, on, uh, if we are in full snow ops, we are we are split seven to seven. Okay. On that Saturday, we don't split normally if I have under a three inch forecast. Okay. So if if there is a problem with shift changes because the forecast was different than what you planned for. Uh, so we brought people early in early on that particular Saturday to ensure that we could continue to have coverage. Um, but it was not as straightforward as a normal full plow operation, which is the 12-hour shift. Okay. Um, yes, it was zero to three, and then right. no, at 10:30 it was eight inches. I agree, and so I'm just trying to clarify in the record, of, you know, about that. So if you, but if you're in full, you're going seven to seven. We're going seven to seven. I mean, shift change is still but is that still exists, tough. Right? Yes, so, no shift so change, and if you are far from a garage. And they're, I mean, like, this is my challenge in areas that have a lot of traffic, and it's going to take them a long time to get back to their routes. So are they, f are they finishing the route, or they have to get back by, No, they have to get seven. back. They have to get back. They have to fuel up. They have to add so salt. What time are th so what time for a 7 o'clock shift change would they leave the route? It depends on what the supervisor calls in. We also will stagger it uh, because we don't want, you know, we don't want all of the trucks trying to line up and get fuel at the same time, so we'll try and stagger them coming in. But that is the, the trickiest challenge in snow, is to get everybody in and everybody out. What they do is on the route is they mark where they got to right. so that the next person starts at that point and, and then continues on. So it's do you not think a shift change is a, is a two-hour delay or less? Or? It can be a two-hour delay. And is there any way of staggering the trucks from coming so back So we do stagger some of them. Usually we, st we keep the spreaders out longer and bring them in an hour later. Um, but that is the most challenging Yeah, because, part. I mean, I think <laughs> and it, it, it has mostly to do with the big s the storm that maybe we weren't expecting or that, that just all of a sudden coming down. It always seems to happen during, you know, 
where we're starting with a shift change, and then we look like, well, and then I'm getting the call, oh, my street wasn't plowed. And it was plowed, it's just they're on a shift change they may not have gotten to you yet for the second. For the second round. No, no, that's, that's true. So they'll go back to where exactly they left off? That, is what, they're, that is what the orders are, is that they go back to wherever the last person left off so that we can t so we don't keep starting at the beginning and never get to the end. Right. So um, it's still the two-inch rule before we get a plow up? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what are the challenges in, 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 in dealing with an ice storm over a snowstorm? And is there anything that how we, I mean, I think last year we had, a, we had a pretty bad ice storm. And I think it made it a little bit more challenging, I think, than a regular snowstorm. Would you agree with this, that assessment? And um, so how, how we there, there, that? So I hate ice. Um, the only thing that I can tell you about the, the March storm, which is that it was snow and then ice. It was right. snow, freezing rain, and then ice. Um, so you basically have the same water content as a 12 or 14 inch storm that you have to physically weight wise move. It's just much, much, much harder. Um, and so to the extent that we've added additional skid steers and that we have a lot more salting equipment, um, probably more than 50% more salting equipment than we had when I started in this job, uh, those make us more effective against ice storms, but they are very challenging. Yeah. Um, the, I, I saw you had an announcement of you're looking to hire day laborers already. Um, still on Staten Island, we seem to have, you know, problem getting day laborers. Uh, I mean, do you, do you see an increase? We have, we, have, we, we have less of a problem in Staten Island 1. Okay. They do come into the Jersey Street garage. Because uh, they're coming from the ferry or...? No, because there are people knowledge. around there who okay. will who will sign up. Okay. Um, but we will move people around if we need to. I mean, and we've used MTA buses in the past to move around the day laborers. Okay. Um, the, my last point, and again, this is, and you know, I talked about this a lot, but I think this has more to do with the other agencies and the MTA, and quite frankly, Samusu runs the bus shelters. Um, I don't think that, that the rest are doing a good enough job at the bus stops, um, with the bus shelters. We have a lot of city park land, so those sidewalks aren't being addressed. And um, you guys are doing your part, and Chief Montanino sends the trucks when we ask him to do as much as he can. So what I'm asking for you is as we get into the snowstorm, mm -hmm. it, it, are you having those interagency meetings? And quite frankly, and I will I will address this on my end, they need to be held much more accountable. Um, because in, like, in Staten Island, if you have Willowbrook Park, no one's cleaning that sidewalk. And that has, that has uh, bus mm -hmm. stops, and uh, then my constituents are in the street. And again, I'm, I know this isn't sanitation. What, what sanitation does, does is go is pick up the slack. So if you, my point is if you're going to have interagency conference calls, I mean, um, if you could stress that mm -hmm. for Staten Island because, and, I, and I'm, I'm actually going to reach out to every agency. I'm going to reach out to Samusa, make sure DOT is doing their job. But, I, uh, you know, especially uh, along these sidewalks that are city-owned properties. And, you know, we're, we're forcing then r riders who are getting on buses in the streets, and that, that's always an issue. But... Um, as I said from the start, you guys have been doing a tremendous job. I, I, I appreciate the, the constant communication, and uh, just keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank and you. you know, as if you have any locations you need, Monsignor. Yeah, I, I'm going to start sending to him already. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. He's ready. He's ready. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Mario, and we have uh, been joined by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson from the Bronx. And uh, Councilmember, any questions? Yeah. Hi, Commissioner. Good Hi, afternoon. You? Thank you very much. I appreciate that in the early part of the fall season, we're already talking about our snow removal plan. We could have talked um, about it in August if you wanted true. to. That's true. Yes, I know. Even with the hot weather. Um, well, I always, always ask the question, and I always want to make sure DSNY never forgets about the step streets that we have in northern Manhattan in the Bronx. I have two dozen in Community District Four and a little bit of five that I share with Fernando Cabrera. And obviously, they're heavily used. Um, it's the only part of the district that has three levels of oversight. So it's parks, sanitation, and DOT. 
lighting, the maintenance, as well as the snow removal. So I wanted to further understand, because they're so heavily used and because they're really concentrated in certain parts of the city, is there anything that we're doing different that we've already done? Because the job and the response is always great. Um, but as the population grows for me in the Bronx, going through a neighborhood rezoning and looking at the future of the district, specifically the Jerome Cromwell area, I'm always interested to find out how we're working with our counterparts and the other agencies to make sure that the step streets are covered. But also, I won't forget my underpasses and my overpasses because I have near Yankee Stadium, 161st Street, 167th Street, 170th, and Mount Eden all on one strip of Jerome Avenue. So I, I definitely need to make sure that those are covered. Um, and, and some of the pedestrian walkways that we have as well. So how do you make sure that DSNY is having a conversation with the other agencies and we're getting to those points? So we, we actually exchange um, and make sure that everybody is very clear about who's doing what. Some are D DOT responsibility, some are our responsibility. The step streets are our responsibility. Um, we have purchased off of our budget equipment for DOT to handle some of those overpasses. Um, and so it is clearly on the radar of the Bronx Borough Chief. He knows that the step streets and the overpasses and underpasses are as important to your constituents as the Cross Bronxes or Jerome Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that they've stayed focused on that the last few snow seasons. And so for the step streets, we use a combination of sanitation workers and snow laborers um, in terms of doing, which is very manual labor. You know, they got to shovel and salt every. I don't understand how those are actually streets, but um, but I know yeah, that they, they are, are. Mm -hmm. and so that they they know that they have to get to them. Okay, and the other question I wanted to ask is about the tracking mechanism that the department uses to determine which streets have been plowed. So oftentimes, what happens is you know we have a a street sweeper, we have a sanitation plower go through an area. The primary streets, obviously, I have like the Concourse, Jerome Avenue, you know, main thoroughfares, those mm -hmm. always get covered. But I think a distinction that I have, and many of us do in the outer boroughs, we have the narrowest streets that are two-way streets. And cars park on both sides of the street. And traffic runs on both sides of the street. It's amazing. And some of these streets, they're not primary. They can be considered secondary. Um, and so they get a morning sweep during, like, the morning rush hour. But then by the afternoon, sometimes people will call and say, well, these streets haven't been done. And a lot of times it's because it's still snowing. And, you know, we've already taken care of it. So how do you determine what mechanism do we use to determine a secondary street that needs to get covered again on the next shift or the third shift? So I think of NYPD platoons, mm -hmm. the different platoons that we have, the morning, afternoon, and then overnight. How does that work? So we, when we're split, we continuously do the route that would include, I don't, there, there are also DOT in Queens is making some of those types of streets one ways. Which I think would be we are too, which yeah, we need to really. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know. Also, for us, when we're plowing, if we have a decent sized piece of equipment and you have another car mm -hmm. coming, it's yep. you both end up in like a face off. Um, uh, so they stay, they stay on their route. So they're going to continuously come through. So once we say we're a hundred percent done, and it's that's after the snow has stopped falling and we've made another pass. Then we will start taking information from the public about what they think we haven't gotten to. Um, but we're using not only um, the Plow and YC data, we have our own internal data to look at um, how we're doing and where we need to go back to. And we also use, even before we start taking the complaints formally to go do a readdress, uh, we're looking at where we're getting calls from the public uh, and where our concentration of areas are that could be problematic. Uh, and we also, you know, we have supervisors in the field, and their job is to be uh, checking and making sure that uh, what we think is happening vis-a-vis -vis the computers is actually happening. I have to say that Jerome Avenue is tricky with the GPS system because, as I said before, when we are underneath and elevated, sometimes the trucks that are going by, their GPS signals go a little haywire. So on the Grand Concourse, it's never going to be a problem. But underneath mm -hmm. the Jerome Avenue with that overhead subway line, it, it could, the metal is challenging for the GPS signals. 
Okay. And then the last comment I wanted to make, I think our minority leader alluded to it, the bus shelters and bus stops. I can't tell you how many times that we will see an entire bus stop where there's one walkway and everyone that's getting off the bus and getting on the bus has to travel through that little stretch of area that's been plowed. Um, that happens quite a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and so I know there are companies that DSNY works with, and, and certainly I, I really employ and emphasize to please stay on these companies because there are a lot of places throughout the city, and I'm not just talking about my own borough, but throughout the city where bus stops are not plowed and crosswalks so that people can travel. Um, and then the train, or oh, I think that's an MTA issue, but I'll raise it anyway. Subway stations, the stairwell, stairwells getting onto the platform. So I cover Jerome Avenue, and we only have two elevators on the whole um, line from Yankee Stadium to Fordham Road. So every stop in between, my office has a train stop, 170. It's two flights of stairs. And the outside stairs are not always plowed as they should be. So I don't know if that's DSNY or if that's MTA. That's MTA. Okay, so we need to definitely talk to MTA because that's – also been a challenge moving forward. So I hope, you know, while you can't necessarily regulate, mm -hmm. but we can certainly have a conversation with I, them about their train stations and their subways and stairwells. Thank yeah. you. You're thank welcome. you, Chair. Well, thank you. Oh, uh, I just have one uh, just last comment. Um, on the BQE, mm -hmm. uh, in between Rodney and Marcy Street, from Broadway mm -hmm. to Borinking Place in Brooklyn, uh, those those overpasses mm -hmm. are they get iced out and they're there for a long time and uh, we it's traditionally been a problem for a long time but there's enough foot traffic that kind of melts it but recently in South Fifth and South Fourth we've seen that they've just been straight out iced uh, and it doesn't look like anybody took care of it so I just want to make sure that we we'll pay we'll we'll, we'll go back and make sure that we're yeah. clear about who's responsible when we'd be getting out there okay but um, outside of that I think uh, again I want to say. When it comes to the work that you're doing in DSNY and, and just working with this committee, uh, we have very quick uh, and efficient hearings, but probably the most productive and, and, and I want to say effective meetings as well because um, you, we seem to improve every single year on the work that we're doing and it just shows that you actually listen to the council members, listen to community members, and actually uh, put it into practice. So I really appreciate everything that you've done. Um, as commissioner, uh, especially when it comes to these snowstorms and other issues, but I think we're done here. So thank you very much um, for your time. Thank and this you. meeting is adjourned.